This is a video walking you through the basics of how to think about energy transfer diagrams. Um, there's a link here that you can use to get to um, some more detailed instructions here and also some suggestions on how to make diagrams that will connect to the electric grid. Um, but I'm going to use an example of somebody charging a phone with a hand crank charger um, in order to show you how to do step one, two, three, and four. Um, this guy's kind of stressing me out a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead to uh, step one. So if I'm thinking about the source of energy that enters the system, where is the energy coming from? In this case, it's clearly coming from his hand, like his hand is making things happen. So step one is just identify the source of the energy. In this case, I write the word hand. Now step two involves identifying other important objects. And I did use these keywords up here as a clue, um, but I would be looking at the situation and thinking, okay, what is important here and what is connected to what? So I'm gonna use lines to show interactions between objects. I know that the hand touches the crank and the wire is attached to the crank and there's electrons in the wire and the phone is connected. I guess I could draw a connection between electrons and phone. Truth is, I'm not sure exactly how to use this electrons yet, but I'm getting started by identifying objects and interactions. Next, step three. How does energy transfer through the system? Well, first of all, notice I have identified a system with this dotted line, um, and I've shown arrows to indicate the direction of energy transfer that I'm really certain about. I'm not certain about this yet, so I haven't put an arrow on it yet, but I can tell for certain that the hand makes the crank go, and that makes something happen in the wires, which is connected to the phone. Like, I'm thinking that energy transfers this way. The next step here that's pretty tricky is to figure out what verb might go with each object to describe what's actually happening. So for example, um, this is especially important for objects inside the system. Um, if, I, if I don't have one out, outside the system here, that's okay. Um, but I can tell that the crank is storing energy or transferring energy because it is moving. The phone is storing or transferring energy because it's charging. So I would say actually, okay, the hand transfers energy to the crank, which moves, something happens in the wires, and then the wire transfers energy to the phone, which charges. This is a piece that I've figured out over time, and I wasn't sure exactly how to deal with this wire and electrons interaction but I went back and looked at my notes and I looked at my, like, I had conversations with people, whatever might be helpful to help you solve this problem. In this case, what I'm looking for is actually this description. It is not just the wire that's important connected to the crank. It's the fact that the electrons move in the wires that helps transfer energy from the crank to the phone. So this is the type of thing where you... If you've made more of these diagrams, you will recognize that this is something that we see a lot, um, but you can also kind of figure it out by looking through the resources that we have in class. Um, next is step four. Notice this is the last step. I'm not doing anything with boxes or numbers until I've got the rest of it figured out. And in this case, I'm saying, okay, the hand put some energy into the crank, and then all of that energy goes to moving electrons, which goes to charging the phone. This is like, I guess, maybe technically possible, but it doesn't, it's not really how things happen. And you'll notice I haven't yet used this word surroundings up here. I kind of ignored it. And this is where that piece comes in to be really, really important. The, it is much more common for some of the energy that goes in from into the system from the hand to go toward charging the phone and some of it to go outside of the system to the surroundings to heat stuff up 
that is useless energy, basically. Um, and this relationship, sorry, this ratio of how much useful energy we get out of the system, in this case to charge a phone, compared to how much energy that went into the system is a term that we call efficiency. This ratio is like a fraction or a percentage that compares how much we get out as useful energy of the energy that went in. Notice, I only get one box to charge my phone because two boxes went to heating up the surroundings or heating up the wires or heating up the air. Or like uh, Lots of things can be heat, heated up, like heating up the crank itself. Like All of this energy is energy that I don't get to charge my phone. Um, last thing, you'll notice I, I also ignored this idea of the electric field. And I'm not going to answer that question here, but I will call attention to it to say that it is a very interesting and important question. Um, I can think of at least two, maybe more places where I could, I could add the electric field to my energy transfer diagram and make my energy transfer diagram even more uh, complete. If I go back to this link, there are some clues in this link. I encourage you to check it out. There are some clues in this link. After step one, two, three, and four, there are some clues here about how the electric field is important, and there are some clues here for how the electric field is important. Um, what I'm suggesting is the electric field idea is important if you're trying to prepare for the class um, to do as well as you can, you really want to think through carefully. How could I use electric field to explain how the crank energy, how the energy from the moving crank gets to the phone charging through the wires? What happens with the electric field?